Hi guys, welcome back to AFTV and full time. We have won. I'm exhausted. I just yeah, ran welcome back, back from, to the studio. I just, <laughs> welcome back to the studio. I was there. I just ran back from the Emirates, um, and then everyone told me why are you rushing. <laughs> but anyway, I'm here. Um, okay, we well, won. Yeah, you begin. How? What was it like being being back in the game? <sighs> we won. Yes. We weren't great, but it's we our won. Our first goal in the Premier League this season. <laughs> Bad goal, wasn't it? Mm, I mean, it was a bit, a bit scrappy, wasn't it? Bit, bit scrappy, scrappy, bit scrappy. But um, I think I'm gonna just from loosely looking at people online mm -hmm. and brief, brief conversations with people here. Um, I think I maybe have a more positive look on this game than I'm gauging from most people. So mm. how how did you feel about that performance and that win? I mean, maybe it's because you were at the game and you actually got to experience it firsthand. Yeah, I mean, we I'll admit that's watched probably a factor. No sound, so you don't really quite get the experience, do you? But for me, I mean, I'm glad we've won. A win's a win, as I say. A goal's a goal. It was a bit of a scrappy goal, but I am glad that okay, fine. We've, we've got our first three points this season. We're no longer bottom of the table. Yeah. We've left Norwich there. I think we're 16th when I looked. Yeah. Listen, there's still games to come oh, yeah. this weekend. But listen, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy that we won. Of course, I'm going to be happy that we won. I'm an Arsenal fan. That's what we want. I just, everyone kind of thought, I mean, every, when everyone was saying like 5-0, 4-0, 3-1, I was thinking, yeah, 3-1 would be nice, but I couldn't see yeah. anything more happening. So 1-0 is a bit unfortunate, to be honest. I think it's one of those, uh, and, you know, let's, let's say how it is. I, I predicted a 4-0 win. We didn't get that. No, we didn't. But do I think we had four, five, six really good chances in the game? I, I personally did, and uh, admittedly, I'm at one end, maybe I'm not seeing, you know, I'll watch the highlights back, but my feeling was that without looking great, we still look like we should have scored a lot more. Um, so what does that say about Norwich, maybe? I don't know. I don't think Norwich were great, if I'm honest. Um, no, really, they, were, they weren't yeah, that great. No, but, okay, we're going to go into it. We're going to break it down. We're going to have various guests appearing as well. I'll let you know how it was from the ground. There's fan cams going on as well, so they'll be coming out on the channel. Everything going on. It's all going on it's at all going on. Um But don't forget that you can have your say by sending in your videos and voice notes, preferably videos. I like, want, want to see what you have to say. Um, the phone number does appear on the screen, so just jot that down. Send in your videos via WhatsApp. WhatsApp, right? Yeah. Send them all in. And um, Yeah, but yeah. before we do that, oh. before we look at any of that, let's oh. look at the full-time stats. And oh, of course. Look at the I think the best players on the pitch was probably Tierney and Gabriel. Probably our, our defense was actually way better. Even though we were kind of shaky a couple of times, our dri our passing out the back has been 100% really good. It's like, it's it's incredible because it's way different from, I mean, it's still That's where we're wrong. I don't know. But I yeah. don't think you could play well and concede that. <laughs> that's, that's, sure. that's what I mean, but maybe they... Yeah, but the possession it. stats are a bit tight, and I thought... I, I, I thought yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah. It was tight. It was 51.7 to 48.3 in Arsenal's favour. Looking at Norwich's shots as well, they had 10 and they only had one on target, but obviously yeah. no goals. We had 429 passes. They had 402. So very tight there. Because they had a lot of the ball. Exactly. And we had 84. Maybe my memory is skewed. Maybe, I, mean, maybe I did maybe just Maybe the little bit of the pitch you could see. Maybe yeah. that's where you had it. But yeah, we had 84% pass accuracy and they had 79%. So you look at that and in terms of possession, in terms of, you know, time on the ball and I don't know activity in the game I guess pretty even but when you look at actual shots taken and I guess chances in that way we were definitely ahead but hey you look you look at the, the mm. score line doesn't really say much does it um my, okay my general feeling on the game was that we without playing well still should have scored a lot more goals you know oh, oh, and, sure. and actually kind of in spite of whatever style of play we have under Arteta or whatever the game plan was today, in spite of all that, I thought we looked like we could, we, like we could have scored. Not every time mm. we went forward because, you know, that suggests that we were fluid and inventive. And I don't think we were that. I just think Norwich were so poor at the back at times that ultimately we were finding space in behind or down the flanks and maybe we were just lacking a little something. I mean, especially in that second half, there were times where you just thought, just put it in the back of the net. And especially that last five, ten minutes when we counted on the space opened up. Um, so I, I don't know. I felt it could have been more. But I remember um, I remember when we lost 8-2 at Old Trafford 
Um, and we had that terrible start to the season. And instead of losing all three games, we actually drew at Newcastle. But otherwise, a very, very comparable start to the season. Yeah. And we played Swansea at home and we made all these new signings. Mert Saka was in, um, Arteta started. I think Santos was on the bench, might have played. I can't remember. All these new players came in and we won 1-0 and it was like a goalkeeping error and Arshavin scored. And I remember that and think, I remember on that day as well thinking, right, let's destroy them and get our season going. And we, we didn't really. We, we won. We found a way and that was it. And this performance reminded me a lot of that, basically. Yeah, I mean, should we, should we ha see what um, some other people have had to say? We've got some... Uh, Absolutely. We've got some clips. Let's, got get, some let's clips get them here. going. Don't forget to send yours in, guys. And uh, also send in comments. We'll... Of course. Hi, FTV. Well, I just want to say that uh, I think Patrick could do a much better job than Mikel Arteta. Just look how Crystal Palace played their game today against Tottenham. Look, the way they had the intense they had, very calm on the ball. You know, a team against a Tottenham, even if they were missing some, they were still having a lot of people and a lot of players, good players. But the way they played, that was fantastic. I love the game, guys. But this shit we are seeing today about Norwich is just killing me. Hey guys, Eve here. Um, main takeaways, if Aubameyang's on form, I think we could be a force to be reckoned with. For me, El Nenny and Jaka have gone to the bottom of the pecking order in the midfield. Having a very mobile midfield changes our dy dynamic completely. Tomiyasu, love it. And also, um, Ben White and Gabriel, if they can stay fit, I think we should, shouldn't should have a problem getting back up there in the table, but if either one of them goes down, I think it's big trouble for us, because none of the backups are close to what they can do. Ben White pinging them long balls like uh, like David Luiz, amazing. I think the best players on the pitch was probably Tierney and Gabriel. Probably our, our defense was actually way better. Even though we were kind of shaky a couple of times, our dri our passing out the back has been 100% really good. It's like, it's it's incredible because it's way different from, I mean, it's still Norwich, but our passing out the back is a lot better. It's just our forward play that's not working for us. Wait, hold up. Uh, uh, come on, cross it, Cedric. That's a goal. Score it. Oh, my gosh. See, it's not the, it's like we have no, we, our players can't do anything in the box. They can't. They don't have any skill to to win. I've seen Saka play for England. He plays better over there. It's because he has players that drift around. There's always people in the box there. He's not He's not one of the key men inside the box when he plays for England. It's Kane. It's, there's other players there. But here, it's, it's just... And then they just take the ball across. That's the only time they counter attack is when we break down right in front of the box. We should be taking shots, taking these goals. We need a goal scoring, like we need a goal scoring player. Okay. Um, who's your best player? I heard Tierney there. Yeah, um, I, mean, I heard he's Gabriel. A, yeah, Tierney, they were Gabriel good. White. I was quite impressed with Tommy Asu. I think. What a, yeah, what a, it was debut. a superb debut. A Great superb. debut. Really, yeah. really, really uh, strong performance. I I'm a big fan of Lakonga, and I think he played very well. Very strong performance from him, as is it, always, to be honest, as it stands. Is it weird for me to say that I kind of felt all the players played well mm. without the team necessarily playing well? I get like you. I felt I like in you. terms of the individual roles, I, I thought Pepe looked like he was going like, to cause problems every, every time he got the ball. Didn't impressed. always come off for him, but it's a, it's a difficult position being a winger trying to make things happen. Ultimately, the, the goal comes through him as well. Um, I thought the back four all did their job superbly. I thought White and Gabriel on the recover kind of whenever it looked like Norwich were in behind they just snuffed out and dealt with it yeah I thought Tommy Asu was superb on his debut and the midfield did this I thought Maitland Niles looked okay like I'm kind yeah, of more impressed with the individual performances than the team performance I think it was it was good to see Maitland Niles play and in midfield and then he was obviously put to right back when Tommy Asu was brought off what did you what did you make of Arteta selecting that midfield of Lakonga Maitland Niles listen Partey's been injury prone and mm -hmm. he didn't want to rush him back we got away with it. We won, so yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, okay exactly, with it. Exactly. I, I never, I never thought um, midfield was the problem. I felt um, having that decisiveness in the final third was, um, and we're going to break it down with the tactical insight show Graham now because there are just some things I noticed that I think you tweak a couple of things, we might look a lot better. Um, but ultimately, good. ultimately, like you know, I, I, I was happy. We've got a super chat here from um, uh, Desaf says. Um, 
Ben White is the English Mustafi with an occasional 50 yard pass. We really brought a defender whose weakest attribute is defending. Look, I, I appreciate the super chat, but I really, I really I disagree. Really disagree I really yeah. disagree with that. But you know, we were, you know, people saying that Saka was dreadful. I wouldn't say dreadful, but he wasn't himself in that game. He didn't see, I don't know about you. Obviously, you were there. I, I, I thought he was poor today. I didn't I'll be, really I'd, see I'll be much honest. Of him. There was nothing really like, oh yeah, what, what a pass, what a shot, what a no, just kind of. Yeah, I, know, I wouldn't. Um, which is a shame. I wouldn't fixate on it too much. You know, the, the guy's been away on international duty yeah. and he's carried this team for a good year. But um, I, he, I do agree that he was poor personally. I, I thought there were times where he didn't look after the ball well enough, or when he was taking players on, it wasn't he happening. He had a hand in the, in the goal, but yeah, it, yeah, it was a scrappy goal anyway. So I, I, I'd like, I'd like Arteta to just yeah. look at Pepe and Saka and think, do you know what? Pepe's doing all right. Saka's not so much. Let's whip it up. Let, mm whip up let's mix it up um and, and see how they do either side and, and see if Pepe can have more joy on the left and Saka come into the game more on the right you know they have succeeded in those positions before and there are times where I'm thinking you know why does the manager you don't have to make a sub why don't you just alternate the players why don't you just mix it up to try something different yeah I mean I would say something that's quite interesting here is I'm looking at the average positions of of the Arsenal players and you can kind of see there's like obviously a back two of uh White and uh Gabriel and then you can see Tierney's quite was quite high and just behind Saka, whereas Tommy Asi was quite far back behind Pepe. So it was almost like Tierney was going quite far up that left that left side mm. that Saka didn't really need to carry the ball. He was more carrying it inside towards Erdegaard or towards Aubameyang. So I think that's quite interesting. Perhaps that's part of what um, yeah. Arteta wants to do because we know that Tommy Asi, although he can play right back or right wing back you can also play as like a right centre back almost so that, that's completely it I mate. feel like that's kind of what what he was um, his game plan was I, I, I think so I think um, we, we kind of we spoke about this um, on, the, on the video we're basically analysing who Tommy Asu is isn't it? he's not one who's going to be doing what Kieran Tierney does on the right hand side but I thought in fairness he got forward well today when he mm. did so credit to him um, Ibrahim says our best so he's asking questions here he goes our best player, Aubameyang. Arteta's built this team around, Aubameyang. If Oba took his chances, we'd have won 4-0. Um, Arteta has bet his job on Aubameyang. And then he asked, was it a bad bet? Um, I what, what, what did you make of Aubameyang's performance? I mean, he had a few times where I was thinking, just bang it in the back of the net. Yeah. And then he just does, he goes up and then he just kind of turns back around towards the corner flag. And then it's pass it back out to Sacco or Erdegaard and then chance is gone kind of thing. So it wasn't, wasn't great, to be honest. It wasn't great, but listen, he scored. I thought he, I thought he tried he hard scored and he the had goal. some moments and he always looked like he might get into the right position. For me though, yeah. the important thing is, so he scored those three goals against um, West Brom, which you were hoping, you know, maybe that would give him a bit of confidence. Obviously our next game was Man City, so it's never going to be, oh yeah, he's going to score another three. That's never mm. going to happen. But maybe perhaps another goal here today against um, weaker opposition in Norwich. Looking ahead to Burnley, who I think will be a bit more of a, a tougher, more physical game than the Norwich well, though they did a good yeah. job of kind of keeping us out. I think that a goal for Bamiang today could put him in good. Kind I of, hope so. You know, I hope so. Form. We found a way to just get the win, and hopefully it's going to kickstart the season. But listen, no, I'm, I, I feel like I'm being a bit too calm. Listen, we won. We won. We, we won. Don't worry, I'm ready to ramp Do you know it up. What I mean? I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just got, trying to get all the points. kind of yeah, get the... a feel for how you're feeling and yeah, everyone else's feeling. Um, but we're going to break it down yeah. and actually go through the game, sort of stage by stage now a little bit but don't forget guys send in your videos and we'll be playing them here on the screen we'll be hearing what you guys have to say i'm and having so many mixed them. messages here terrible performance a win's a win great game pleasure not seeing Xhaka i've got here when party came in midfield looked organized Vieira did what he was used to doing and then he said cr7 legend okay well yeah enough about man united but i've just seen a comment saying wodegaard and i cannot believe that is it just me who thought odegaard was really good today it was decent, yeah. Yeah, I, th I thought you were superb. The work rate was there, making things happen. Um, super chat. Rams from... look good as well. Rams yeah, had happy. a good was clean happy. sheet. Yeah. That's what that's what you want from your goalkeeper. There was one little bit where I was thinking, just please, just kick it. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he just and I was like, oh. There were some nice no, moments of fine. composure then, fine. some nice yeah, things he, and he was moments. I thought, yeah, I, I get what well, you exactly. know. I get exactly. what you're here for. Um, super chat from Super Relax. Um, wish I was super relaxed the last two hours, but I wasn't. Um, one nil against Norwich with your best team is a worry. Yeah, listen, 
we just when you lose your first three games, you just want three points. No, I listen. I was going into this game saying we need to see a performance as well as a result. Did I get the performance? No, mm. I don't think it was a bad performance. I'm seeing a lot of, you know, I had messages from from friends and family saying what a terrible first half. I didn't think it was a terrible first half either. In fact, let's go into it. We, we've got some super chats. We'll go you. to. Yeah, go on. Where does Lacazette come in? Does he come in? Martinelli, these kind of players. Um, at some point, I imagine, but but I didn't have a problem with the subs today. No, 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 me yeah. neither. But I'm just because me and Cecil were talking about it at half time. He was like, "Yeah, bring Lacazette on, mm. bring Martinelli on." I was thinking, "Yeah, maybe maybe Martinelli on for Saka had a quiet half. Lacazette maybe he'll score some goals." But as we say, this is our strongest eleven. Will will we really see them that much? This I, season? I think they'll I think they'll be yeah. squad players and they'll come in and play a yeah. part. Yeah. Um, right, let's fly through some super chats and then. Hopefully we should have some videos to listen to as well. Um, so Stephen says, I think we need a poacher to put the ball in the back of the net. Cruel made a few errors and we didn't capitalise on them. Um, Shreth says, lovely game between Barca and Real Madrid. Defence looked solid. Midfield okayish. Forwards need killer finishing. Uh, great uh, Tommy Asu debut. We need to level up 4.5 out of 10. I think he's rating the performance. What do you rate it? Five. Fine. I don't think I think a lot of people say oh it was a two or three and we found a way I think I think we were okay yeah. um, Methan says that right back overlap is still on saw Arteta asking players to come in and leave that space sit tight brothers okay, okay. it'll be interesting to see how he okay. uses Tommy Asu Mahesh says it was a pleasure oh you've read this one not seeing Jack in the lineup yeah, right. um, yeah I think let's talk about the first 20 minutes my feeling on the first 20 minutes was good start um, we looked sharp Mm -hmm. I think there was a moment where we'd had three, four sort of good attempts in, in well, what felt like the first opening 15 minutes. And I looked across, it had only been eight minutes, and I kind of realised, like, wow, we, we have made a fast start, we're all over them. And then it felt to me like after that first 20 minutes, it just, Norwich grew into the game, and we couldn't, like, stamp our authority on it in the way we had in that first 15, 20. I don't know what it was, it was almost like, we lost faith in ourselves. We started, we went into the game, we always believe the crowd are up for it. And then when we've not got the goal, we sort of think, oh, is this going to work? Um, how yeah. did it kind of feel to you guys? I could kind of, kind of agree with you. What I, what I would have expected, I think we all expected that, was we should have battered them, basically. That's what, I mean, yes, we were lower than them in the league, but we're Arsenal, we've got this team, we should be battering them, we should be, we should have been on them like City were on us. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It should have been it should have been like that from the start, <clears throat> but it it just it just wasn't. It was just kind of like we played our football, good or bad, I don't know. They played theirs, good or bad, I don't know. It was uh, you look at the stats; it was an even game. We just made more, took more shots, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm happy we won, but like, can we beat them one nil? That's it. But we had thirty shots. I felt, I felt the chances did come for us. Look, guys, remember, here on Full Time, you get to have your say. Send in your videos. We want to hear what you guys have to say. We'll be reacting to it. Here, yeah, go on, take a super well, chat. Adam here. Uh, big up from Sydney, Australia. Tommy Yasu looked good. So did Lukonga. White and Gabrielle looked good together. Uh, all round performance, not good enough, though. As yeah, you I, said. I kind of think every player would, would get like more than a six or seven out of ten for that performance. But the team doesn't get a six or seven. Mm. And I don't really know how to explain that. I kind of feel everyone did what the manager asked of them. Um, you know, and, and they and they put on a show for the fans individually, but the team didn't look there. There we go. Um, been a while since I thought that. Christopher's agreeing with you. Agree with James. Individually, the effort and play was excellent, but mm. for whatever reason it did not translate as a whole team as a whole yeah. into team play. Yeah, I think that's it. I think you know, we'll do a player rating show, you know, after, which probably can't tomorrow morning or tonight. And, you know, you, you, I can't see myself giving, just off the top of my head, Odegaard gets an eight for me. Pepe gets a six or a seven. Lukonga gets an eight or nine. You know, White and Gabriel get sevens, eights for me. You know, uh, off the top of my head, people are getting high ratings. But when you said to me, how would I rate the team performance? I'm saying five at, at, be yeah. at best. And I think I'm being quite kind. Um, so, yeah, definitely a weird one. Yeah, and we've got another chat here saying only change I want to see is Partey for Ainsley and the new finishing coach. Yeah. What do you think? I wonder who coaches the finishing. Um, I actually want to look yeah. at how many times Pepe lost the ball because I'm seeing people complain about his... Um, him lose well, yeah, okay. So he gained possession nine times, as yeah. did Saka. Those were the highest for Arsenal. Pepe lost the ball 24 times. But you know what? 
Is that just a stat and not really reality? I, I look at I look at these stats all the time. Yeah. Um, big up Opta. Um, and what's Kieran Tierney normally is the highest, and he's always in the like eighteen plus. He he, he will lose the ball several times. Um, but it doesn't necessarily translate to him having a bad game. I think sometimes Pepe is expected to be the guy who makes things happen. D did you ever feel at times, as well as much as I've just been being up Odegaard, did you feel at times Odegaard wasn't playing that risky pass or wasn't forcing it? And, and uh, you don't want to force it, mm. but sometimes you've got to do something to try and just make it happen. Um, and I felt Pepe was trying to do that where Odegaard wasn't. I thought Odegaard was very good, but I'm just saying, you know, that the, the onus was on Pepe to basically get it over the line for us. And he basically did. I feel like Pepe, as you say, was that outlet. Kind yeah, of, you know that was coming in on that on that side, trying to cross the ball in, and I think that's why he kind of lost the ball quite a lot because they were just they were just crosses because he made quite a few crosses as well. Let me get that. Mm. Yeah, he made nine crosses. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah only half five of them, them were considered decent. Yeah, fair exactly. Enough. So okay. maybe that's maybe that's why. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Pepe's performance what did you make for the of, most part. What did you make of Norwich and their defence then, and Tim Krul as well? They're, they're, and I said this in the preview, mm. and and I, I was really worried about saying it because I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to look completely stupid if we weren't to go and win this game or at least score a lot of goals, which we didn't, to be fair. Um, but I think a big part of why I'm saying the individual performances were good, but the team performance wasn't good, is because, despite everything, Norwich was so bad at the back that the kind of chances were kind of just coming anyway. Mm. Like, especially when the game did start to open up and you felt Smith Rowe was just driving at their defence and Pepe was getting room for shots and Saka and Abaming were finding space to, to, to try and make things happen. And at times I was thinking, are we playing well to kind of conjure up these opportunities or are Norwich just so bad at the back and it rare to think they were. They played some nice football. There are times where I thought, oh, fair play, you've beaten the press here and that looked quite nice. But ultimately, they weren't, they weren't good, I thought. I, apparently they have been missing a few players. Obviously, Todd Cantwell didn't start and I don't think Billy Gilmore was Billy Gilmore in the midfield. Um, I was just so caught up in the Arsenal and the Emirates and everything. So but um, while we just double check that, guys, let's hear what you guys have had no, to say. No, I don't saying, think he was. Yeah, he wasn't no, in the midfield. There you go. Um, let's hear more about what you guys have to say. I'm going to be hearing from more people throughout the show. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to getting their thoughts, actually. Turkish, LV and all this, who's around. And, yeah, fan cams will be coming up soon as well. So let's hear what you guys have to say. Yeah, with, with my reaction here, man, literally, I was like this right here when the game ended i mean when the game at the end and i stayed like this like it was a win but that win just like that goal was a struggle it took pepe to tap that ball one more time by accident to creep it in nearly offside i'm just wondering how we would have played if the ball would have went in you know what i'm saying i mean so if, if it was offside i wonder how we would play it it's just um i think hopefully this is a moral victory that kind of gets people upbeat like okay this is not going to be like a completely no win season, right? Or something crazy. That next game, we're like, okay, cool. We got away to a lot of stuff, but look at film. We have to be hungry because we weren't hungry in the goal. That's what. That's the difference between the big clubs right now. When they get in that penalty box, they have a hunger, a dominance. Uh, uh, there's something about them that's just different. So um, I'll take the win. I've uh, been an Arsenal fan my whole life, a diehard Arsenal fan. I hate that I even celebrated the way I did, but I'll take the win. Um, but we we have to. Maitland Niles was in too long. Um, great guy, but he just it just he shouldn't have been in the squad today. Uh, I I just feel like he shouldn't have been in the squad. That's my personal opinion. Um, you know, I don't know. There's just a couple of things I just feel like Burnley's gonna be a tough one, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, Arsenal one, Norwich nil. No. Happy we got the three points, but realistically that should have been like a four five nil win. I'm happy that Abba scored. Um, he could have had a double, but unfortunately, he just decided to try and lob the keeper instead of just slowing it. No mercy. Like I don't even know what to say, man. But should have been more ruthless. Um, Ramsdale done well today. Um done what he had to do. I think Burnley would be a better test for him because of the likes of Ashley Barnes and Chris Wood. But yeah, overall, I'll give that performance a 6 out of 10. Um, much love from Essex. Um, big up AFTV, and I'll see you guys next one. 
Big up from Sydney, Australia. It's currently 2 a.m. Um, score 1-0, not good enough. Game rating, 6 out of 10. What do you rate the game, Daniel? 5 out of 10. 5 out of 10, you know. We started off pretty well and then got a bit excited and then got that lucky goal. I've been Arteta out for a bit. Arteta out, for sure. Yeah, started off good. Uh, not good enough, though. Not good enough at all. For a team like Arsenal to be versing Norwich City and only win 1-0, is, that isn't good. Big up AFTV, watch all the videos. Take care. I gotta say, that was my favourite one. <laughs> just yeah. Sorry, that, you're all amazing for sending in your videos. Thank you so much. But just the way he just kept sort of referring to his mate, just yeah. sort of, I'm Arteta out. What about you? Oh, <laughs> it's yeah. just, it was just quality. Anyway, Marcel, welcome. What's going on? How's the watch along? The watch along was, do you know what? Like watching it in this um, in environment was perfect, yeah. but watching that game was so. It was so dry, man. Yeah. Like it started off really well. We was all excited. Fifteen minutes into it, it was like back to like watching Arsenal from like two weeks ago. Yeah, just, just slow. Just, just it felt like there was nothing. There was no threat. That's yeah. what, that's what it is. There's no threat. Yeah, we I, can't score goals. It it felt like um it was going to take something either lucky or special to win yeah. it. Even though we were getting in good areas, I thought there were times I thought, okay, like we can do something here. It never really amounted. That's kind of where. I'm a bit torn whether we actually played well or not. I'm like, well, like in almost we did in the first two thirds, and in the final third, I yeah. felt we just lacked something. Precisely, I feel like I feel like there was a couple points when like old, I think it was Odegaard, like mm. like was dropping a couple balls over the top, and Bamyang was getting onto the end of them. Yeah, but Bamyang just didn't know what to do. Yeah, once he got onto the ball, and it was like. We need some like, like obviously Aubameyang is that guy. He's been that guy. He's got like he's got money in the bank, in it because obviously he he was scoring thirty goals a season, yeah. like two seasons ago. But like now it's like he's lost his like killer instincts. I feel and and I'm, and I just hope he can get it back because no, I get can't it. It's, he's going to be hard to replace. Yeah, he was. Um, I think we signed him for what, sixty mil or something, yeah. and he hit the ground running. Everyone thought, "There we go, we've got that." We've got people, that striker. I remember my friend saying, "A is a cheat code. Like even when you're playing badly, you'll get something because of a Um And then, kind of with time, I think that's taken its toll on him because you can't yeah. always expect him to score at that rate. Today, yeah, he missed some chances, but in fairness, he put one away and we win the game. Yeah. So. Yeah, it wasn't his best performance, but I thought he looked sharp. He was trying to do things. He just needs that conviction back. The, it's the yeah. conviction. I feel yeah. Like the goal he scored as well, though. We've got we've got to put our hands up and basically say, if if Pepe didn't do a forward roll and hit the ball by accident, that goal's getting ruled off as offside. Yeah, is that so? Is that what happened? Because we were in the ground, right? And we saw it. And everyone, there's a massive gasp from the fans when we saw the main highlight that showed yeah. that he looked offside. Because we all thought, well, that's off there. Yeah. And then the ref gives it. And we're thinking, well, something must have happened in that it must have hit a Norwich player Literally, or unintentional it, touch or something. I don't know how it. I don't know how it, it works. It hit the Come post. On. It yeah. hit the post. Bounced back off. Like there was a scuffle. I think it hit Pepe again. Yeah. Hit the goalkeeper. Then Pepe done a forward roll and it hit his foot again, which in turn played the ball backwards to Aubameyang, and he tapped it in. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> do you know? Do you know what I mean? Like, I got, yeah. I got, like, 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 we got, we got so excited watching it, and it was like, how are we getting excited about that goal? Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it's one of them goals. All right, cool, you've scored that, but you want to see us score like an Arsenal goal. You want to no, see I a convincing, it. like, something that we actually meant to do. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But like, we didn't see none of it. Like, Aubameyang, literally, he was through on goal at one point. And he decided to take a shot from like, I don't know, 40 yards or something yeah, yeah, like that. And yeah, I was like, why are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. Run. He, he didn't back himself in that situation. He didn't, he didn't yeah. back himself at all. And and, mm. and that's the thing. Aubameyang used to back himself in any mm. situation. And like volley over the top. Like yeah. he's doing it. He's, he's attempting it. But I feel like he's just he's, he's just lost that that edge to himself at the moment. I've, I hopefully really, the goal yeah, brings it back. Hopefully hopefully it brings it back because it's, it's, it's in the Premier League now. But yeah. at the same time, it's like... I don't know. Martinelli ain't looking sharp. Lacazette looks all right when he comes on the pitch. I feel like I feel like our biggest issue is just the person who's finishing our dinner because, like, mm. like you said, like our players were playing good. Like Tomiyasu was amazing down the right side. Like Lokonga was was perfect through the midfield. I feel like when Arteta made that substitution and took off Lokonga and Tomiyasu, I was like, 
Yeah. How have you taken off our, our two <laughs> best players? <laughs> no, no. How have you taken yeah. off our two best players? Like, obviously, Ainsley done a good job. Mm. Party came on and, and he done a good job. But you want to, but I don't know, like, I feel like sometimes Arteta does, like, I feel like he's not watching the same game that we're watching. I feel and, he, and, and, he, and he makes, he I makes rated changes. the attempt to get Smith Rowe, Odegaard and Partey as a midfield yeah. three. I like that because I thought, do you know what? That is quite brave. You've gone from two holding midfielders to one. Um, so I, I didn't mind that. But I was surprised Tommy Asu and Lukonga were yeah, the they, ones to come off. I guess you've got to take one of them. Yeah, yeah. I suppose I get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I feel like just from watching it, there was there was a few other players that I would have probably taken off more, take, uh, taken off sooner because mm. I feel like they weren't really like mm. giving much to the game. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like Saka is, is a player who... I love like yeah, Saka's one of him, one yeah. of my favorite players, but I feel like in this game today he wasn't he wasn't Saka. He struggled. Yeah, like like he I think he I, I think he found it hard to kind of like get into the full flow of the game. So I yeah. think maybe I would have took him off sooner and maybe introduced in Smith Rowe instead, and mm. then like maybe down the line maybe took off Tomiyasu mm. and brought in Party or something like that I don't know no I, listen I get what you're saying no, we were all quite shocked at the ground actually when he took Tomiyasu and um, uh, who was it Lukonga off um, yeah. as you said because they were performing so well but when I saw him go to the 4-3-3 and made an announcement to right back I thought do you know what at least it's brave. I'll yeah. give you that. Um, let's take some super chats and then talk about those videos there. So Anrush says, team looks really different with part in the middle. He brings the best out of the right-hand side. Pepe's decision-making is very questionable. I agree on Pepe's decision-making, but he also looked our most dangerous player at times. Pepe did look very dangerous. Like, like he did get a lot of opportunities to do things. Yeah. But I feel like sometimes the things that he attempts to do aren't the right thing no yeah do you know what i mean yeah. i feel like that's definitely his issue because once he beats a player you're like oh my god he's gonna cut on on his on his left side yeah cut, cutting on his left nope he decides to like pass the ball across the thing to someone else and it's like bro we know you've got a wand of a left yeah, foot in yeah, it like yeah. use it in it like that's yeah. the thing and ultimately the goal kind of came from that really from yeah him coming inside and there were times where you're thinking he could have killed them off. I mean, they all, they all had their chances, to be fair. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of those videos that came in. Don't forget, guys, the phone number's appearing on the screen. Send in your videos. We want to hear what you guys have to say. We're going to react to it as well. Now, two of the videos there, um, great videos. I, I thought I thought one thing was interesting was comments on Maitland-Niles, who, again, look, maybe I'm in Fairyland because we won and I was at the Emirates and just sunny day and I'm all like, woo, life's great. <laughs> But I thought Maitland Niles did well today. Is it just me? I, I thought nah, he looked you're, good. you're right. Maitland Niles was one of our better players. I thought he was he good. He 100 was one of our better players. I feel like a lot of people will like. It's one of those things. Being an Arsenal fan, there's always someone who you make a scapegoat, and maybe Ainsley Maitland Niles because he is that player from the previous regimes right. who's still like lingering around the team. They've targeted him, but he didn't. Up to me, he didn't really put that many feet. Wrong. He maybe made a couple, couple mistakes, but he didn't put that many feet wrong. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So, 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 so to me, I wouldn't really necessarily heap any kind of blame on him to be like you didn't play well because I think he did. I think he actually oh, he like did. had a, had a really good game. I, I thought him and Lukonga in the middle were the very solid. dynamic, yeah, and they covered definitely. each other quite nicely. And I enjoyed that when one went, the other sat, and it felt like almost going back to football twenty years ago when it wasn't. You know, I'm a deep lying playmaker, yeah. and you're the box to box, yeah. and I've got to stand. It there was, was taken, it was just yeah. old school, two in midfield. Yeah. When you go, I sit, and I quite, I quite liked it. And actually, they're not, they're kind of, they're physical in that they're quick yeah. and they, they get around the pitch and, and and they're stuck in, but they're not the biggest. So to hold the midfield down the way they did for a lot of the game, I, I was pretty impressed. Yeah, definitely, hundred yeah. percent. And I feel like I feel like Maitland Niles was definitely doing a, a, a good job of closing. He, he was closing down players and winning balls and doing yeah. interceptions. So. Yeah, man, he, he he played really well. He played really well. I, yeah. I, I don't get why people are giving him a hard time. Listen, I, I was happy. I think there were very few players that I was disappointed in, really. But the other thing was Aaron Ramsdale. Now, listen, I know he wasn't massively tested today, um, but we called on Arteta. If this is your guy for the long term, yeah. play him. Credit Mikel Arteta, he did it. Um, I think he sent a message that this is what that was the back four and the goalkeeper yeah. he wants going forward. Um and then I just thought there were moments with his distribution or composure on the ball that I thought, that's really nice. You've got us out of a really sticky situation by just being calm, by having a good passing range, by knowing when to go long, when to feed into the middle. And I think if there's one thing I can judge him fairly on today, 
it's it was his decision making. Yeah. What we what we kind of criticised Pepe for, though Pepe was trying to do a lot and was very busy. Ramsdale less busy, but very good with what he had to do. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think Ramsdale for me, in compar like like if if I was comparing Ramsdale and and Leno, I'd definitely say. Ramsdale is very he's, he's calm on the ball like I don't feel like he's got it in him to well he probably has got it in him but I don't feel like he gives me the same feelings that Leno gives me when it, like, like when Leno gets the ball and he's looking for the pass yeah. he looks nervous like he doesn't know where to pass it yeah. Ramsdale was like calm he got the ball like even 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 when he when he done a little shimmy and, and yeah. like, lost the defense like uh, lost the attacker then played the ball out I was like he's very calm mm. and knows what he's doing so like it's so that's a good look for the future that's definitely a good yeah look for the future. i completely agree guys keep sending videos and we're gonna listen to a few more now and don't forget to send your comments super chats all that we want to hear what you have to say arsenal finally won a game of football a scrappy goal but a one nil win three points on the board i think we're out of the relegation zone at one point the arsenal fans started chanting we are staying up <laughs> i thought fair play um all right go on let's see more of your videos yes AFTV. just reactions for the game I think it was a very tight game to be honest with you. We had chances but I feel like Norwich were always in the game and at the same time I feel like with Ainsley Maitland Niles man he was making a lot of uh, mistakes like missing passes, not giving the ball in the right positions and Lokongo was kind of saving him the whole game man so yeah I remember the last game I spoke to Robbie's when Aubameyang made his debut I think we beat Everton 4-5-1 or something like that and I told him that if we're not going to make vast improvements in the future, we're going to be going lower and lower down. And that's what's happening. We've got a long way to go in this season. But I don't think against stronger teams we're going to do too well. If we're only beating Norwich 1-0, what's going to happen when we face Burnley next week? Or another team that's a bit higher up the table. So I'm a bit concerned, man. We should have scored a few more goals. So definitely, I think we have a long season ahead. Bless, man. Take care. I, I, hear, I hear the point of it's Norwich, they've had a difficult start to the season and it's only a 1-0 win with a, uh, with a scrappy goal. I get all that. Let me read you some stats. Big up Harvey sent these through. Um, in their first win of the Premier League season, Arsenal mustered 30 shots against Norwich, their most in a league game since attempting 33 against Man United in December 2017. I know there's shots and then there's quality of shots. Like yeah. How many of them were actually good chances? But I think it kind of... A is my point of we were getting in the areas yeah. and maybe if our finish a bit better been a bit better and we've been a little bit more decisive in the final third those spells of possession and those moments we had would have looked like better chances and we'd have looked like we were playing better yeah. do you know what I mean because almost like from goalkeeper up to that front three that was all good we're getting into nice areas that's nice and that's what we do when we get there I feel like there was there was so there was so like Smith Rowe had a chance right at the end to finish the game Pepe had a shot straight at the keeper I feel like, like Aubameyang shot straight at the keeper it's like like the the things that, that that you'd usually see strikers at big teams just like dink the ball like low right into the corner and like no one's getting it our players ain't doing it like like they're like they're just literally like oh the, the ball's there I'm gonna just like kick it straight at the keeper it's, it's, it's straight at the keeper and it's, and it's and it's not really I feel like they need to get their is, I don't know. Is it ruthless? Like they, they just need to be a bit more like, yo, I'm, I'm we're gonna just, we're gonna just kill teams. We're gonna is it kill a mentality teams. thing? I think it's a mentality. Like, thing, do you 100%. think it's because we, 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 we can talk about Arteta and we, and we will trust me, we will on this show. Um, but is it fair to say as well that for all we can say about the manager and the tactics and the game plan, you know, Emil Smith Rowe, I thought did well by the way. Yeah. should have scored. Hundred percent goal. You know and. And there's, it's one thing having a good shot saved or it nicks the post, but it was actually just a really poor finish. It was kind of yeah. straight at the keeper. Straight at the keeper. There were times Pepe, Saka was getting through. A Bamiyang mainly in that first half. Odegaard at one point. You think he can't put the game to bed. Like, Arteta can't walk it in for yeah, you guys. Yeah, that's it. And I did feel for him in that sense because it should have... We weren't great. We said that. We know we weren't great today. But it should have been more than one nil easily. It should have one hundred. The like the amount of shots that we had and the amount of shots on target that we had, like we just need to finish our dinner. That's 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 the that's the issue there. Like we like we've scored one goal in four in in four games. Is it one goal in four games apart from the yeah. the, the West Brom game? But the West Brom game we was playing against their second their, yeah. their second squad. So it's like we should be like when you're through on goal. If you're if you play for Arsenal, you should know. 
how to finish the ball because I could be running at the keeper and shoot straight at the keeper and people would expect it from me. But you're getting paid so much money to do a job, isn't it? Like, like you're, you're, it's you're the pressure, forward. Isn't it? It's that yeah. first game. You're like, we need the win. This is the goal that might kill it off. But, and it doesn't uh, like, it's almost like the only way at times I know I predicted four nil and I'm disappointed. We didn't get, didn't get a performance to at least match that. But at the same time, I stop and think about it. Of course, it was going to be a scrappy yeah. because, because of the pressure this club was under. Yeah. Like, of course these, and it's a young group. But would you but, say that, that, that one goal that we scored there has relieved any pressure from those from those attackers? That's a great question. Uh, we'll see next week. Uh, if yeah. I'm honest, probably not. It's it's the kind of thing that I know. I know a lot of people are saying it's a good thing we don't have Europe, but a little part of me thinks if we had, uh, you know, whoever in the group stage of the Europa League next week, and we smack them up four five nil, then maybe that would kind of you know, release the kind of the tension and the pressure a little bit yeah. more. Whereas this was kind of just getting over the line. Um, but we did. Uh, we've got some more videos coming in. Just some Super Chats quickly. Real Madrid Arsenal uh, with the Super Chat says, against the bottomless team in the Premier League, Arsenal struggled. Uh, Arsenal struggled. What am I saying? We were the bo we were the bottomless team. Okay, bottomless. I've never heard that before. Fair enough. Um, Coventry Jordan says, what were your thoughts on the Edu interview? The guys haven't got a clue in the highlights. And highlights the problems higher up. Let's close that gap on Spurs now. Um, oh, we've talked about this in so much detail. So go check out News Daily around the week because we all more than had our say on that Edu interview. Uh, Sadat says, We don't have a 10. Odegaard hardly plays balls into the box. A Bamang and Pepe can't string pot key passes. This team used to have the likes of Urzo and Sesk once. I think we do have players that can do it. It just didn't come off today, if I'm yeah. honest. Um, but yeah, anyway, guys, let's hear more of your videos. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Midnight over here in Singapore. My name's Pierre. Uh, you know, stayed up and uh, watched the game. Represent Arsenal. Uh, but yeah, we did. We did well in the first half. Definitely, our, our defense has definitely improved in a lot of ways. Glad to see Tommy Asu join the team. Uh, really, you're giving it loads. He brought some 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 injection of energy and uh, some will to play. Everyone, the pressing was all right. Was pretty good. But I just never felt like we were going to score. And we, we should have been three nil to be honest with all those chances. Uh, Saka was a bit off today. Bami Yang, okay, yeah, nice little tap in in the right place at the right time. That's what you need from your striker at some points, at least. Anyway, good thing, positive thing to take out of this is our defence is looking stronger. And yeah, we managed to get three points. So big up AFTV for doing the watch along and being as positive as it can be uh, and represent Arsenal all the time. Hey guys, CJ here from South Africa. Um, I'm happy with that game. I'm happy with the three points. Um, the boys pushed. We could have come going 1-0 down after having lost three games in a row, being bottom of the league. We were able to hold on for the win. Super proud of the boys. Um, we should have scored more. We had many chances, which is good that we created so many chances. Our finishing will get better and we will get where we needed to get. We need to get, you know. Tomiyashi was amazing. Lukonga was good. Party class. Uh, who else was good? Um, White and Gabriel look solid. Ramsdale looked pretty good. I like that he made different decisions. He wasn't always looking for the small pass. Sometimes he kicked it long, you know. So, yeah, good performance from the guys. I'm still, I'm still not convinced about Arteta, but come on, you Gunners. Hi, AFTV. So just watch the game. First of all, I want to tell you all that your content is great. That's brilliant. And finally, we have a win. It feels so good. Like it's just one nil, and it's against Norwich. But it still feels good. I think uh, uh, I think we played well in patches of the game. I, I really like uh, Tommy Asu, the new signing. And I really like Maitland Niles in midfield as well. And I think today we were taking risks, you know, trying to chip one ball in and trying to play the long balls. And, you know, just doing things in our game, doing different things. So that's a positive thing because usually when I see an Arsenal game, in recent times, it's just the same thing over and over again, like trying to cross, trying to find someone. But this was uh, not great, but for a change, it was good. So, yeah, come on, Arsenal. Okay. Um, so, interesting things I definitely wanted to pick up on. A lot of people praising the defence. Yeah. I think, um, listen, we can all debate and, and have our thoughts on the performance in general. I like to think I'm not alone in thinking that Ramsdale in the back four and Maitland-Niles and Lukonga in front of them, but mainly the back four were very good today. 
They were really good. Question though. Yeah, go on. Do you feel like potentially they looked really good because we were playing against Norwich? Yeah. If we was to go up against if if we had this back four against big back five against City Chelsea, even Leicester, do you think we would be looking as good? I think the answer no oh, I don't know. It's a great question. Listen, it's hard because it's the first time I've ever seen them. Yeah. So it's not even like Gabriel I've only seen for a year and he missed a lot of it last season yeah. because of COVID and stuff. White's a new signing, Tommy Ass is a new signing, Ramsdale's a new signing, Kieran Tierney, I've never ever really had a problem with his performances. Didn't start the season great, but generally I kind of trust Tierney. Um, and I think when you're playing teams like City and Chelsea, how you defend is kind of also dependent on how the team defends, yeah. not just those yeah. four. But what I liked about those four in particular, the reason I'm picking them out is when we're playing, let's say, a Villa or a Leicester, we might have a bit of the ball. And a game like today against Norwich. Their job is to sweep up. Whenever that ball does come over the top and Timu Puki's, Timu Puki's running at goal, um, well, I know Campbell didn't play, I can't remember who was playing on the wing for them. There are times they got into dangerous areas and I thought they just dealt with it really well. Yeah. They got back, their recovery pace was spot on. At times the game opened up and I started, my heart started to go a bit and they dealt with it. And then when it, you know, when Norwich did get that one good chance at the end, where the ball came into the box, yeah. Gabriel was straight there to deal yeah. with it. There was something robust and athletic and intelligent about the way they defended today, and I really enjoyed it. And Tommy Asu, I think I saw at half time of five aerial duels, he won all five of them. Yeah, he's sick at heading. He's right, really good. I love that. So I was seeing a back four just do its job. I, it, they weren't asked loads of questions. But I felt they did everything perfectly. Ben White was winning his, his yeah. aerial duels. And I think after the criticism he got for that Brentford game, I think he thought, I'm winning my headers today. Yeah. And he did. So that was my biggest takeaway from the game. Like, I looked at that back four, I thought, in these home games, we can press teams like we did even late, late, late into the game because you've got a back four that can recover so well. 100%. And with Ben White as well, I feel like this game was one game where we actually got to see him play the ball out and come out with the ball. Yeah, he and good, didn't on he? the ball, he looks amazing. Yeah, he looks yeah. really good. His passing range, I thought, was phenomenal. And also intelligence of passing. There were times where he stepped into midfield and if the ball wasn't on, he you know held on, held on. Yeah, once or twice he, he, he lost possession. But... He picked out a nice little lob into Pepe, I think it was, and he just kind of helped build out the right-hand side. Yeah. And we always say that Arsenal are so left-heavy, and he gave us something on the yeah. right that I and really so enjoyed. Tom Tommy Asu in that first 15 minutes. Yeah, let's minutes. talk about that. We, we've, how, how long have we been into this stream? 45 minutes. That, we're not giving Tommy Asu the credit. Tommy Asu, yet. coming down the right, I was like, this guy, <laughs> who is this guy? He, like, he's, yeah. he's pacey, he's winning all of his headers. And literally, he was the. I think he was. He was on the end of like three. He nearly finished three three chances, and I was like, "Where's this guy come from?" Like the mm. the, the 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 volley thing. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. like, like so when, it came when, storming ev at the when end, everyone yeah. else missed it, and like I just saw him running onto. It. I was like, "What is going on?" If he had scored that, if he had scored that goal, he would literally like that would be a, the best debut of any player, <laughs> of any player ever. Ever facts. <laughs> facts Ronaldo just scored two you know bloody Ronaldo <laughs> Man. Um, I thought Tommy Asu was great listen um, what I liked about him was um, he made me feel really safe when he had the ball Yeah. and I think what I've kind of had the last couple of years and I think there's redeemable qualities when Maitland Niles plays right back or Chambers or Cedric and never felt any of them were right to be first choice and the reason is what I saw from Tommy Asu today. Yeah. A guy who, when he got the ball, looked comfortable. When the ball went up in the air, he won his headers. Yeah. When when I thought they were in behind, he got back. He's quick. He, he's a, he's a brave. He's he's a brave player. He goes in for what he wants, and yeah. like he and he usually comes out with it. Right. And when there were times where he was played down, I thought he's going to whip it in. He sort of like dropped the shoulder and cut back inside. I thought, okay, so he's he's got a bit of quality in the final third. So I was just seeing things that listen. We can't run away with it because, as we said, yeah. you know, Norwich, I was saying that there were shambles at the back and I thought they were again today. Um, and I and I felt Arsenal lacked something for sure going forward. But Tommy Asu was good. And I said in my video about him that I didn't think he'd be the kind of marauding right back that Kieran, kind of Kieran Tierney is on the left. Um, but he was, yeah, he, he, but he was good he when he got forward, <laughs> he did well. Um, let me ask you about the midfield. We touched on Maitland Niles, but Lokonga, have we unearthed the gem here? Lokonga, I feel like Lokonga is potentially my favourite Arsenal player at the moment. Oh wow, okay. I actually do because like every game that he's played in, he's given a solid performance. And when I say solid, I mean he's 
done literally zero wrong. Yeah, no, and he like, has. I agree and, with that. And, and like when Shaq is in the middle, the ball gets played into him. He can he can't turn. Mm-hmm. Lakonga's turning with the ball and and finding the pass straight away. Like Lakonga's definitely got that. He's got that thing that Arsenal have been looking for for a long, long time. And I think him and Party in the middle, like when both of them are in there, because Party's obviously the general, and then he's and then Lakonga's just out there just like doing the doing the hard work. It's mm-hmm. like that is that's a solid midfield. Do you know what I mean? That's that's yeah. a midfield that, that Arsenal fans can be like, yo, our midfields. No, no, I, I, I agree. That's a midfield I can definitely get behind. I think a lot of fans can. Do you know what I like about Lakonga? He was so smooth. Yeah. Like he just kind of makes it look so easy. I think Maitland Niles has that about him a little bit as well, but I think with Lukonga, like, I think that raw potential yeah. is there. I'm looking, I'm thinking, I just hope we had so many youngsters that have had this potential yeah. and never quite built on it. I just hope Lukonga can. I think he yeah. will. I think he yeah, will. I hope so. Super chat from Paul says confidence has been low after the first three games. This was always going to be a struggle. It will give us a bit of a confidence boost, though. Um, yeah, let's get your reaction to that and then sort of round up, and we're gonna hear what Charlene is Charlene going to jump in we'll get Charlene's thoughts in a sec but go on your final thoughts on kind of that comment oh, but right. also just the game in general what was the comment again that yeah you know, <laughs> call out a fair point because I spoke a lot after I read the comment um confidence has been low it was always going to be a struggle but we found a way do you know what I feel like the confidence has been low I feel like like the maybe the players will take will take away from this and be like yo we've we've got a win now let's build on it but I feel like from a fan's point of view it's quite hard to like to to have more confidence in the team because they haven't given me the performance I thought yeah. they was going to give me. But by all means, hopefully, this three points next week we get another three points and we just keep growing and building and making making sure that we're trusting the process. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, making sure that making sure that it's working. <laughs> They're gonna come at you for that. Monster. I know they are. I know. <laughs> Look, I don't trust the process. I'm just I'm just I'm just bantering. But like literally, like yeah. I hope I hope like as a team we can start moving forward because yeah i'm really not looking forward to seeing all or nothing next week next yeah. oh my god i forgot I, do you know every now and again cecil reminds me of that i think oh god because um, it's happening no but i got do you know what you're right it's almost like if you don't use the words trust in the process but you say as you know seeing these players come together and hopefully arteta getting what he wants maybe at the yeah. team now start i don't know maybe we've got that to hold on to I'm, I think Arteta may be gone this this season. I do because okay. I don't. I, like, I, I can't see him taking us to where we need to be. Yeah. Like I feel Arsenal need to have someone who's got the experience. They know all the tactics. They're not making weird weird substitutions mid like like, like in the middle of a game. Like I feel like I want to have confidence in my manager, and I don't feel I don't feel like I've got confidence in the manager. I've got confidence in the players now but not the manager, and I, get, I think that's the no, issue. I get that, I get that. But he did get the three points today. Somehow we found a way, we had plenty of shots. Guys, keep sending in your videos. The number comes up on the screen. We want to hear what you have to say. We're going to say bye to Marcel. We're going to hear what you have to think now. We're going to hear what you have to think. We're going to hear what you have to say, <laughs> and we're going to get Charlie in a sec. Let's hear what you got to say, guys. TV from Russia, our first win this season. You know, I'm so happy. I just want to say big up. Emil Smith Rowe for all his efforts in the last 30 minutes. Big up Sambi Lakonga, what a player, big player for us. You can already see his leadership qualities. And I just want to say big up Tomiya, so what a debut for this guy. These huge wide shoulders, you know, on the right back. We missed that physically and mentally strong man on the right back. I'm so happy we won this game. I just want to say something else, not just about the game. Uh, it made me so proud today to see two banners in the Emirates Stadium. The first one said RSSC, Russian Supporters Club. Uh, I'm sorry, Russian Speaking Supporters Club. It made me so proud. And the other banner said uh, Syria Arsenal because I'm half Syrian, half Ru- Russian. And you know, just a little thing that makes me a little bit extra happy today and about Arteta you know what I mean we still have no style of play uh, our style of play is uh, sideways and backwards but you know give him time uh, today we had five new signings in the squad and you can count Maitland Niles as uh, sixth new signing because it was the first time he played in that midfield and I hope this is the start of something good. 
this season. Too laborious, uh, too many half chances with long ranges. We did look better when Smithro came on, but the goal was crappy and not enough chances throughout the game. The midfield failed to cut open the defense. We're talking about Norwich, which uh, does it boast of the best defense in the league. Um, I don't see them sustaining this performance over the long run. There'll be better teams, there'll be stronger teams. Arteta out for me, Conte in. Let's go. Charlene. Hello, Jay. We won. Yay. Yay. Three points. The title Finally. charge is back on. <laughs> oh, guys, don't hear that. It's not getting too things. excited. I know, I know, I know They'll the be straight at you is. now, James. They really will. They really will. <laughs> anyway, we won. <sighs> now, to all the viewers who have been with us kind of from the start of the show, we kind of made our way through. We talked about the 11, the subs, that first half. We talked about the back four. We were all very impressed. Were you impressed with the back four? I was. I was. Loved what yeah. I saw with um, Gabrielle and Ben White. Yeah. Looks we was calling for that. We've seen it and we're happy. So, and big up so Arteta so for good. playing Ramsdale and chucking Tomiyasu in there. Exactly. I mean, it felt obvious to me, but you never know what you're going to get. And he did it, in fairness. I know. On the show this morning as well, yeah. we, he pretty much put up the lineup that we was asking for this morning. Yeah, not far So off, I was yeah. really happy when I saw that. Yeah. Um, I mean, with the new signings, Tommy Yasu, for example, yeah. I really wanted to see him and I was pleasantly surprised. I was really that. excited. I can't lie. Because I, I've, yeah, exactly. I was saying, I need a new name on the back of my shirt. I don't want to get too excited. You get Tommy Yasu 18. I might. Wow. <laughs> take take know, one more win one over game. Norwich, guys. No, not, not <laughs> even, James. <laughs> not even oh. but if you look at the way he's just come in he looks so confident he got forward he even had a shot at goal as well i just love the energy yeah. that he brought um to the gameplay today i thought he looked very it didn't look like a debut did it no he, lo he looked so very exciting. reassured and exactly. like third page of new team new league yeah i was really impressed honestly yeah Go Tommy. Big, big up to him um mahesh with a, with a super chat says to win against any team with your strong midfield in front of the defence, Part and Lukonga look promising. Tommy looks promising as well. Xhaka out, Arteta out. <laughs> Poor Xhaka still getting it today oh, no. after listen. We won, okay? Let's leave some people alone. But um, we spoke about Part and Lukonga. I thought Parta came on and did well as kind of the lone holding midfielder. Lukonga just oozes class. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about the guys in front of them. We spoke a bit about Pepe, Saka. Didn't really work for him, but Martin Odegaard. Now, I'm, I'm my, I am I'm, think I'm in a rare camp here. Mm. I thought he was great, but I don't know if I'm, Helen's in the background, <laughs> give me a big thumbs up. So I don't know if I'm the only one. Let us know in the comment section. What, what did you, yes, Helen, thank you. Do you want to present? Helen said, <laughs> Helen said, Odegaard gave us some quality. And I agree, there are moments where we needed something a bit special in a tight position or, or, or just to help us play out the back or just get into a nice area and he was making it happen and the work rate was there oh my god like some of that sort of getting back at the end as well your thoughts on Odegaard I thought Odegaard but Odegaard I can't even talk Odegaard god I'm really struggling to say his name Odegaard was good today as well I wouldn't say he was my standout player though I don't know if that's because no, I don't think was, I don't think and Tommy Asu um sort of stood out more for me but Odegaard did have a really good game as well I really liked him I mean a couple of balls I think one of them for sure was his pass over the top to Aubameyang which I think he should have done better with generally I thought he was getting into good pockets finding some nice passes and listen I know there was nothing like world class about his performance in terms of the passing range that we know he's got and some of the balls he can slip in but I think generally he did his job in terms of creating some chances but getting us into positions where he felt like where he picked up the ball, he was causing problems. Yeah, in front um, of I don't know if the movement was necessarily there in front of him. I thought Saka looked a little static today. Pepe was always touched, you know, hugging out to the touchline. And then Aubameyang made a few runs. But generally, I thought I thought he was good. And if you're not going to do the whole silky creative thing, you've got to at least work hard. And he 100% did that. Yeah, he definitely gave that to us. It's just yeah. a shame that we didn't manage to finish the chances that were created because we did have some really good chances. Yeah. And we should have scored a lot more goals as well. Let's talk about that in a sec. We've got a super chat from KJ. It says, Pepe was horrid. I don't horrid? think. Horrid? I don't no, think he was I horrid. I thought, I thought he was. I, I, he I disagree. Really I thought he was good. He had a really good game, Pepe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Helen thinks man of the man match. Man of the match for Pepe. I don't know if I'd put man of the match, but I, I thought he was good today. I thought he looked... Le, Le Conga, I thought was great. I thought Lukonga was superb today. And then the... Yeah, true. Well, yeah, 60 minutes. It was good. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. That's a good point from Helen. Lukonga came off early. 
Yeah. Did you, sorry, could we just go back to that? With um, Tommy Yasu and Lukonga mm. coming off, mm. what did you make of that? Because I was disappointed, yeah. especially with Tommy Yasu. So initially, initially I thought that's, yeah. I th honestly, I thought that's crazy. You're taking off our best central midfielder. I thought yeah. Maitland Niles did well, but he was taking off Lukonga, then he took off Tommy Yasu. I thought he was having a great debut. Um, but then when I saw him put Smith Rowe in midfield with Odegaard and Partey, and then move Maitland Niles to right back. I actually thought that was quite brave of Arteta. I thought, mm. fair enough, because I was thinking Saka's going to oh. come off. But instead he went, let's sacrifice a holding midfielder, get more creativity centrally. Mm. I thought, you know what? Fair enough. We, we, we criticised him for not going for it. And he did in that, in that situation. So, yeah. And then Helen rightly pointing out that... Um, should we get you on in a sec, Helen? <laughs> um, Helen rightly pointing out that's you know, how we got the goal as well. So... Did we look a better team when we made those changes? Yeah, I think we did. At, at times when Norwich were coming forward, I thought, I'd love to have Tommy Asu on right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, he's so good in the air, some of these set pieces. But no, I, I, I thought I got what Arteta was doing and ultimately it did work for us. Um, so yeah, Pepe, back to the Super Chat. Cage said Pepe was horrid, I disagree. He said Odegaard turned his back on goal because he wasn't confident enough to shoot um, with his off foot. I think he means, that, yeah, his weak foot, right foot. Yeah. Um, our number 10, he asks, not good enough. I disagree, man. No, I think, I think they're being a bit too critical there on Odegaard. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree And I know that. exactly I what good. pass he was talking about. And I don't know, it's like when we got in front of goal, sometimes we just seemed a bit nervous to just take that shot. And it's just like too many passes, trying to do too many pretty stuff. Yeah. And we should have just went for it. Let me ask you something, Charlene. It's a big question. Mm -hmm. Because I think football can... It's a simple game, but sometimes it'll be quite complicated. We're kind of trying to like break down what went right, what went, what went wrong. Um... I understand why people feel like we didn't play that well today. I don't really feel like we played that well. I mean, I, if, okay, if you were to give our performance a rating, what would you give it? I'd give it a six out of ten. Okay, six. Based on, I mean, when we kick started, I think the first half of the first half was really good. It was positive. It was energetic. Yeah. And then towards like the second half of it, we yeah. started to sort of lose that energy a bit. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, and in the second half, I don't really think the energy levels went up as much as they did at the start of the game. Yeah. So the reason I ask bag. is because f despite us not playing great, we had so many chances, like almost the point where I was thinking, <sighs> yes, there was a lack of a game plan, if you want. I mean, I think when you're playing at home to Norwich, it's just about creating chances. And yeah, um, there's a lack of a game plan. There's a lack of a obvious kind of tactical approach. Um, there were some weird things going on in terms of positioning of players at times. But generally, I was thinking, the chances are there. Yep. Like, first half, they dried out after the first 15. But second half, we had so many chances to, if not go one and up, certainly to kill the game. Mm. Um, and I, I thought, we are getting into the areas. You know, a better... A better, more confident team would have put three or four past them today. And we should have. Yeah, and I strongly agree with that. Um, the question is, can we sort of carry that on and keep improving on it as well? Well, it's almost like do that again, but against a better team and take your chances. Yeah, and take And then that will go level. from a not great performance to a great performance. If we, if we played like that at home to Leicester, or Everton, who are good sides. Mm -hmm. If we were that dominant against those sides, but actually took some more of those chances, I think people would be talking about how great Arsenal were today. Um, and obviously we didn't take chances, and obviously we know Norwich are poor. I said they were shambolic at the back. Um, so I, ca I can't give Arsenal too much credit for the chances we created. But they did come. Yeah. And I kind of think we need to start putting these in the back of the net, because similar to Brentford in that we didn't have a lot of great chances, but we had some good ones and really we should have been putting a few of them away. Yeah, I mean, Norwich did actually make some really good saves defensively as well. Yeah, yeah, they got, yeah. They so um, One off the line when Pepe kind of got there and there's a good block. Yeah. Yeah, that felt goal bound. And yeah, I second what you're saying as well for the chances that were created because yeah. in previous games we haven't really been creating that many chances. So it is a positive step in the right direction. Yeah. And we did get the three points, but I think we just, I think... The season where we started on such a downer, we just want more. So everyone came into this game on a massive high, yeah, wanting goals, out. especially with the fact that, you know, we had a minus nine goal difference. So it's like, all right, we want the three it's points. But, <laughs> yeah. but we also want to be banging goals. But I guess we got to, you know, take it one step at a time. I think we wanted like... Harlem Globetrotters footballer. We wanted to just absolutely destroy Norwich. Yes. Four, five, nil, sweep them aside and say, we've arrived. We didn't get that. And I think because we didn't get that, you, you know what? I'm just repeating what you said. You said it perfectly. Because we didn't get that, 
fans are probably thinking oh, it wasn't great but in, in reality yeah. it wasn't bad either yeah exactly yeah, it's one of those it just going to check right. with production have we got any more videos <laughs> no we don't we're done okay anyway guys thank you so much for tuning into full time don't forget the tactical inside will be up on monday what the fan comes coming out now people have been at the ground and here in the studio giving their thoughts um what to say three Anyone? points three points. Woo! three points finally and we've got to go yeah our season has started <laughs> yeah i completely agree it's it's it wasn't emphatic but there were things to like big up tommy asu great debut yes. wild on the conga Aubameyang, thank you for the goal. Big up Ramsdale as well. Yeah, he got a big round Ramsdale, of applause. Yeah. The fans Dangerous were really, well. really behind him, which was great to see. And yeah, I think... And Leno wasn't missed. Leno so. wasn't missed, no. Um, so look, Tottenham <laughs> lost, we won. Woo, happy days. We can have a good weekend for it's the first a, time in a long time. It's not a bad day. <laughs> the sun's been out. Guys, thank you for joining. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out all the content that will be coming out throughout today, tomorrow and Monday as well. Reviewing this game and then we'll start looking ahead to Burnley. We need to build on this Arsenal. That was okay. It's a pass. Yes. It's not great. It's a pass. But next week we've got to build on it. Thanks for joining. Stronger. See you soon. Bye.